Hi there everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me for another episode of Should You Pull for Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia and today we're going to be talking about a character I'm very much looking forward to sharing with you all and that's going to be Kuja because he comes back with his lost chapter this week with his EX weapon alongside Setsa and Yuna for a banner that I've very much been looking forward to but do we think that Kuja is worth pulling for outside of my fanboyism and do we think he's going to last a long while? If you're interested in listening to that and you want to know how Kuja fares in the upcoming meta, then stay tuned and keep on watching. Now before we begin, I'd like to invite you all to check out all the social links in the description box below, including my Discord channel, my Patreon channel and my Twitch channel. I will be actually streaming my pulls for Kuja tomorrow morning at about 10am GMT. So if you guys want to see me have to spend 75,000 gems on Kuja's EX weapon, then by all means feel free to do so. I'm doing so because he's my favourite character. Whether it's yours or not, then I encourage you to continue to watch the video to see if it's going to benefit you in the long run or not. But I also want to pose a question to all of you Opera Omnia followers that I've gained over the past couple of weeks or months or so, is that my Patreon channel was originally built for my channel when it was purely focused on the trading card game, but now that I've gained a following, I would like to try to expand what I do to benefit you guys as well. So if you have any ideas for things you'd like to see come out from my channel or anything like that, then please leave a link, uh, leave a comment in the comments below, or join me on Discord and come and let me know what you think there. So we're going to start this off by talking about Kuja himself. Now, after his 60-60 Awakening, Kuja is strong very very strong he's probably the dawn of a new kind of power creep era of dps units that would we haven't seen anything quite this powerful yet except we kind of have a little bit because we got early reworks for barts and thancred which really elevated them into the kind of realms of damage that we're looking at with kuja however we have already seen that barts and thancred are both absolute top of the line top tier units up until this point so we'll have to have a look at what kuja gets out of his 60 60 awakening and his ex weapon to see if he can match up to the others so in order to have a look at what kuja's awakening actually does for him we're actually going to look at the game itself because City DB hasn't quite updated just yet and I wanted to bring this video to you guys before Kuja came about so that I could help, hopefully better inform you guys as to whether I think it's worth you pulling on this banner or not, regardless of my feelings on it. So looking at Ring Holy Extension, I've actually already awakened my Kuja to 60-60 as I'm sure you guys are aware of how excited I am for this character. But looking at what Ring Holy Extension does, it adds another use to Ring Holy, which is never a bad thing, and then when using Ring Holy or Ring Holy Plus, the Bravery attack count becomes 6 instead of 3. It does slightly more damage, and it has 120% overflow. When you're using it, it grants Soul Cleave level plus 1, so that means that you'll be able to get to the maximum stacks of Soul Cleave instantly by using Ring Holy. So it means that you're only having to cycle between attack, buffed attack, attack, buffed attack, unless of course you have the EX weapon which we'll get to in a little while, but if you're using the max version of this, so Ring Holy Plus, it triggers an additional HP attack on the target. Before this point in time, Ring Holy was basically unused, like you just didn't use it, unless you were using it to build up stacks, but now that it has a, a, a HP attack on the end of it, it's a much, much better attack. So you're going to be using this in conjunction with Ultima. I mean, Ultima's going to be your bread and butter of Kuja's kit, but Ring Holy is still really useful. And then Ultima Extension increases its uses by one again. And then it also grants Soul Cleave level plus one. So again, just like Ring Holy, you're going to be able to use the extend or the plus versions of your attacks exactly like straight after using it the first time or either of them. You get a tremendous bravery damage boost to the triggered attack, which means the second attack that you get after using Ultima Plus. But the big thing about Ultima's sort of transition into the 60-60 Awakening is that before it was a random 9-hit Brave Magic attack and HP attack, or the group HP attack. So it would deal the Bravery attacks to random enemies. Instead it becomes a 9-hit Group Magic attack and then a Group HP attack and the additional triggered attack that you get from the Plus version also covers this as well. What this means is that instead of it doing random hits, it's going to hit every enemy all at once 9 times. So depending on how many enemies there are on the field, this either triple, like doubles or even triples the bravery gain you get from hitting with an Ultima or, or you know, Ultima or Ultima Plus. So you're going to cap out with this attack every time if there's more than one target. And if obviously Ultima Plus goes off, then it's going to be doing that twice. So Kuja becomes an absolute DPS monster. 
However, while the 6060 Awakening is very, very nice, it does run out of steam quite quickly because of you having to alternate between the plus and the non-plus versions of Kuja's attacks. And this is where his EX comes in in Force Symphony. So what Force Symphony does is it's a 5 hit AoE Brave HP attack, which is all straight up nice, and it's an 100% HP damage attack to all targets, which we've seen before in characters like Agrius and Tidus, and that's a very, very positive thing to have. But it grants four it grants four stacks of soul divider, so you can kind of just play around by doing just HP and brave attacks until you're ready to go off with Kujo because you know you you already get it by doing those. But doing a four symphony is going to get you to max stacks instantly. But the thing that most benefits you is Dark Messenger. Now what Dark Messenger does is it makes it so that your soul divider stacks don't don't leave after you've used Ultima Plus or Ring Holy Plus, they stay, which means you're getting those every time you attack with him. And this is extraordinarily powerful, but you also get a nice little buff from Dark Messenger in the same vein as Barrett, Avalanche, or Agrius is Brave, where it raises your, your entire party's attack and speed. And it's not by a small amount either. It's not written on here, but it's 40% that you get as a buff. So that's not a small amount for you to just get for your party. So this is the dawn of the era where your DPSs become your supports as well, and you just go all in with massive DPS characters. We've already seen a little bit of this from characters like Agrius, because she brave batteries while buffing herself, and then buffs everybody else, and then debuffs your opponent, and it all works out very, very nicely. So there's a lot of things that you get from this. However, the limit break that you get from the uh, Symphony of the Stars buff that you get here is actually really nice as well because it turns Brave Attack and HP Attack into plus versions of themselves and the HP Attack is a Brave HP Attack which grants two stack to Soul Divider and then Brave Attack Plus is a harder hitting Brave Attack that also grants two stacks to Soul Divider because originally his Brave and HP Attacks would only give you one. But having access to these go off so quickly and you kind of just go HP, Brave HP Attack, Brave HP Attack Maybe an Ultima or a Ring Holy if you need to, just to clear some waves, because it's all AoE. Basically, Kuja becomes an AoE god, and he is, like, extraordinarily powerful from the get-go. As soon as you get all of his gear, he's just incredible. He doesn't need much in the way of setup, but anything he gets is massively beneficial to him. So if his max brave goes up, you're going to cap out on Ultima Plus on multiple targets very frequently. Against single targets, he's not quite as good, although Ring Holy... Because of the fact that it hits random targets, if they're all concentrated on one enemy, then they're all going to deal a lot of damage. So again, you're going to get a large amount of you know, brave HP damage. But there are going to be better options than Kuja going into the future. I'm obviously going to call for Kuja very readily because he's my favourite character in the entire franchise and he just happens to be very good. But next month we're going to see the dawn of characters like Renoa and Golbez who are pretty much strictly better mages than Kuja is, which pains me to say because, you know, I want my Kuja to last forever but it's never going to happen that way. Although he does get a bit of a resurgence in JP when his um, EX Plus comes along and he gets slightly stronger buffs as well, so we can have a look at those as well. And then, um, yeah, so the JP version basically makes it so that he gets large overflows on his attacks. So the Brave Stolen on Ring Holy Plus can go up to 180% rather than 120, and then Ultima Plus can go up to 150 max bravery, including on the second on the second set of hits, which is extremely powerful because, well, we're already capping out with Ultima and Ring Holy more than likely every time you attack with them. Why not make it so that they do more damage? It's a simple buff, but it's a very effective one. As with most, most characters that are DPS related, when it comes to artifacts, you generally want that 50% level crystal, the crystal level 50 um, passive that you get, which is Soul Conductor boost, which means his max bravery and his speed goes up with active buffs. He's going to have active buffs open because his soul cleave counts as one of those, so you're going to have those buffs. But if not, then you're going to want max bravery buffs, attack buffs, and mighty ultima buffs so that you're just dealing more damage. That's all you ever really want from Kuja is more damage. So ultimately, do I recommend pulling on this banner for Kuja by himself? Yes, with a caveat. If you're, if you're a fan of character Kuja like I am, you will not be disappointed in his kit. He is very, very strong and he kind of trivializes content for 
a short while. And that's the kind of emphasis I want to put on that phrase, is that it's only for a short while, because over June and July, we're going to be getting more characters that are simple, or like, simply just stronger than him. And, you know, he's, he's very much going to be viable over the course of that time, but he kind of gets power crept before he's needed. So his power level uh, is alongside the likes of Bart and Thancred, who we got very early and are exceptionally strong to this day, and Beatrix even at this point. So he's, he, he's not going to last as long as you might like. I, however, will probably be using him for months or until I, I'll get his absolute last breath out of him. Because, yeah, alright, Renoa might be stronger, but if I want a second mage in that party or I don't get Renoa EX, you're damn sure I'm going to be using Kuja for it. But, so, it's up to you guys whether you want to save your gems or if you want to pass on this banner based on Kuja alone. I already have all of Kuja's like 15 and 35 maxed out, so I am pulling literally just for his EX, but I love this character so much that I am definitely going to be doing that. And I'm going to be making a video, like a pull video, I don't do those very often, but I'm going to do a pull video with just me. So if you guys want to come and chill out with me and watch that, then by all means feel free to do so tomorrow. In terms of the other characters on Kuja's banner, I, you know, Yuna is, for want of a better word, she's just bad. To be honest, she's like she was one of the first characters to get a level 60 awakening, and at that point in time, she was above and beyond everybody else. But unless something really drastic happens to Yuna, she's just not going to get used, unfortunately. Her 55 and 60 passives just don't do enough. Like she can, she'll remove the like debuff from a Mulbara after your opponent, because like, the boss for Kuja's uh, Lost Chapter is a Mulbara. But that's all it's really going to be, she's going to be useful for. Her cheer is a framed buff max bravery buff, which is kind of nice. And can give you a bit of health, can give you some bravery. But unless, I mean, even if they do give her her rework early, all that it's really going to do is extend the durations of existing buffs. And with the way this game works, why extend buffs with, a, with an external character when you can just reapply them? Using an example of somebody like Lilliset. Lilliset, you you never really run out of her buffs because she's doing stuff all the time. So you would, don't ever really need Yuna to reapply stuff like that. It just doesn't do enough. She does a little bit of healing, she extends durations, and this is after her rework if we get it early. And if we don't, she just doesn't really do a lot. So unfortunately, I really wouldn't pull on this banner if you're hoping to get Yuna out of it. Setzer, on the other hand, is a very good character. We've, we've been using Setzer for quite a while, you know, since his 60-60 Awakening. We've had a lot of really good uses for him. His Freeze Joker is an incredible farming tool. It just, like, two-second animation, snap, they're all dead. Red card can be really, really good for, like, just delaying things. If you have Lightning EX, then Setzer kind of compounds that. He's going to compound with Quistis. In fact, I'm really looking forward to using a team of, like, Quistis, Lightning, and Setzer, because it's just, your opponent's just never going to get a turn if it's a single target thing. But, Setzer's been prominent on multiple banners at this point, and a lot of players will already have him. If you don't, he is very, very good. And he will last for a little while longer, because he's been, he's been carrying us for a while now. But, if you already have him, then obviously he's not going to be a reason for you to pull on this banner. I actually purposefully didn't max limit break Setzer's 35 CP weapon, even though I had it. So that there was another reason for me to pull on this banner. So that I, this, it all comes down to kind of pulling efficiency and things like that. I have sets as L, uh, like 35 CP at 1 LB and I did have his 15 maxed out. But I figured if I get a 35 CP for Setzer, it's not a complete waste on this banner. But ultimately, if you're pulling on this banner, you're pulling for Kuja. And whether you pull for Kuja or not is entirely based on your preferences. I'm pulling on him because he's my favourite character and he happens to trivialise content for a little while, but his uh, his time in the sun is short, unfortunately. he get, Like I said earlier, he gets a nice little reawakening when his EX Plus comes back around, and he's quite an early adopter of the EX Pluses, so he gets to have his time in the sun once again quite sooner than a lot of other characters. But with Renoa and Golbez around the corner, you might want to save up for them as well. I, or, you know, I have quite a large amount of resources, so I'm hoping that Kuja doesn't eat them all, <laughs> because I'd rather be able to pull for characters like Renoa and Golbez still, but because he's Kuja, he is just going to be a big thing for me. So that's going to be it for this video, for should you pull for Dissidia Opera Omnia. And the short answer, do I think that this banner is worth pulling on for anyone who's not a massive fan of Kuja? 
You'll probably be quite surprised to hear me say this, but honestly, no. As much as I love this character, and I will be pulling for him, and he is extremely powerful, his shelf life is actually going to be quite short-lived, and he's going to be power crept by characters like Rinoa and Golbez in about a month's time. Is he bad? Not in the slightest. He's probably the most char powerful character we currently have available in Opera Omnia, but in the long term, he's going to kind of fall off quite quickly. I'm going to make sure I find ways to use him no matter what happens. And the other two characters on his banner are either characters we've already used a lot of in the form of Setsa or a character that we're probably not going to use at all in the form of Yuna. So if you're a fan of Kuja, yeah, you're going to do well out of this banner. He's going to, he will be really, really strong for you. And if you're like me and you liked him that much, you would have pulled for him even if he was a steaming turd. But luckily, he isn't one. He is very powerful. But we have other characters even this month to look forward to as well, in Paladin, Cecil, and Quistis. And Rosa, if you get her, you know, having looked at JP recently, if you happen to get her EX, she's not great. She's, she's pretty good now, but she's really strong when she gets an EX plus and a rework. So she might even be worth investing, investing in at the end of this month. So I hope this video has helped you guys look into this banner, see what you guys want out of it, whether it's worth you pulling at it at all, and hopefully I will see you guys tomorrow for my pulls on Twitch. And I've, as I've said earlier, I'll leave a link in the description box below if you want to come and find me tomorrow morning. And then after that, I will be uploading that video to YouTube as well. So even everybody everybody else who hasn't seen it on live on stream can come and watch it here. So thanks very much again. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.